welcome to the Wisdom Talks. I'm Joe Wisdom, and uh, I first want to appreciate every one of us who have been supporting us and watching our videos, sometimes sharing. And uh, we are just coming to you because we did, and we feel we have something to share. I know at some other platform you also have something to say. Nobody that doesn't have anything to tell people, only that sometimes we don't have the platform. So we also thank you that every time that you watch us, we know that you are getting something out of it. Today I want to talk about wisdom for life. You know this is wisdom talk, so I, we can't bring less than wisdom for something. So today we are talking about wisdom for life. And when we talk about the wisdom of li uh, for life, I want us to, to, to buy, to buy today from the word of God because the word of God is the wisdom of ages. You know, Jesus, I said last time that Jesus has been given to us as the wisdom of God. So anytime you are studying the word, you are studying the wisdom of of God, and today I want us to go and look at uh, uh, a scripture in the book of First Kings, First Kings chapter ten, uh, from verses one. First Kings chapter ten, from verses one, and uh, this is a story where a woman called the Queen of Sheba traveled miles, miles, and miles and miles uh, of her, and uh, just to come and hear the wisdom of Solomon. She had heard about Solomon in the days past, and she wanted to come and get the first hard information. And when she came, we are going to see what she found out and whether her expectations were met. And uh, this is one of my uh, anthem scriptures. Every time I read this scripture, I, I, I usually call, call myself a meeting. You know, unajua ile kujita kamkutano. You know, you call yourself a meeting and you ask yourself, do I really exhibit such kind of, uh, such a level of wisdom as Solomon was because anybody who wants to become anything in life, you must exhibit some levels of wisdom that will make you attractive and acceptable to the system that you are serving. So today I want to go directly to First Kings chapter 10 from verses 1 and uh, allow me to read. The Bible says from King James Version, it says that, And when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. So we find that the Queen of Sheba is coming with hard questions, difficult questions. And through that, allow me to continue sharing as we read, through that, you realize that she's coming with hard questions. And I want to tell everybody who is listening to us, or my viewer today, that, or my listener today, that people have difficult questions. There are people who are going through so many things in life, and people have difficult questions that they are seeking for answers. So if you are just there, if you can just continue investing in yourself, you become one of those people who will become the answer to the many questions that people are asking themselves. So uh, she came with hard questions. Uh, it says that verses 2 says that, um, and she came to Jerusalem with very uh, great train, which uh, with camels that were bare species and very much gold and precious stones. And when he was, uh, when he was come to Solomon, she communed with him all that was in her heart. You know, So uh, uh, something that we can point from that point is that, from that scripture, is that uh, Solomon was a consultant. People could come and ask him questions. So consultants say, peace. Uh, are you, uh, have you specialized on a certain area? You can be a consultant in that area. People can come and ask you questions pertaining what you have studied, pertaining what you are gifted at. And the people can pay. You see, the Queen of Sheba never came empty-handed. She came with gold, silver, precious stones, all these things because you need to be appreciated for the questions that you answer. So verse 3 says that, And Solomon told her all her, uh, answered all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king which he did not told her. So when you begin to answer people's questions, people begin to pay. Let me tell you something. People have not paid you because you have not addressed their questions. When you begin to answer people's questions, people begin to pay. And I know there are levels. I've discussed about levels of passion here before. And I've said that there, are, there, is the, there is the recognition level, there is the refining level, and then there, will, there is the rewarding level. Where now people begin asking you, how much are you charging? How much do you want us to pay? And you are getting there if you are not yet there. So, uh, verses 4 continue to say, And when the Queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom, I want you now to be very careful on the statements that I'm going to release here because they will add value to you and they will help you become a better person. 
He says that, and when the queen of Sheba, verse 4, and when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom, that is something I want you to understand, the wisdom of, of Solomon. When the queen of Sheba observed the wisdom of Solomon, that wisdom of Solomon underlined the word identity. When people look at you, they must identify you with something. Identity is what gives you what I call in this forum and program USP. Your identity is your unique selling point. When people look at you, what do they see? You must, you can, you, 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 you know, you can't, you can't just be there. People must know you for, for something. You must stand for something. You must be a representation of something. You must believe in something. So the queen of Sheba, when, he lo when she looked at Solomon, she was, was able to see wisdom. So whenever people look at you, what do they see? That is your identity. And your identity sells you. Your identity markets you. So you need to find out your identity. You need to know what are you good at. What are you wired to do? And as I keep saying this program before, you can't be the alpha and omega of everything. You can't be selling everything that is there in the marketplace. You look like a madman. You know? You look like a madman. So you must be very, very careful on, on the issues of identity. You must identify yourself with something. Number two, he says that when he saw the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the house that he had built. When we talk about the house that Solomon had built, we are talking about uh, structures. Men are builders. Wherever you are, you are building something. People, there are some people who are building their careers. There are people who are building their businesses. There are people who are building relationships. There are people who are building their businesses. People build different things. Now, my question is this wonderful morning. What are you building? What are you building? Because men are builders. Yes. Solomon was building the temple. The house that he had built. Actually, when the queen of Sheba saw the, the, the house that he was building, you know, the, that Solomon was building, you know, she was overwhelmed. It was a huge thing. It was a beautiful thing. So what are you building? Can people admire what you are building? When people see what you are doing in your career, in your profession, when people look at what you are building, you know, uh, in terms of your business, you know, when people look at you uh, and see what you are building in terms of relationship, are you a person who keep breaking from one relationship to the other or are you a person who builds relationships? Become a builder. Men are builders. Right? So he says, the house that he had built, and the meat on his table, when you talk about the meat on his table, we are basically talking about capacity. We know the capacity that people have by what they eat. You visit some people at a, in the evening and you have to understand that they have already eaten. Because they had, all, they had shared all that was available for that day. You visit some other people and they are asking you, are you taking fish? Are you taking chicken? What are you taking? Because it is available. So you, what you eat determines the capacity that you have. So when you're looking at the meat on the table, that means that Solomon was a man of capacity. And I want to challenge every one of us. Do you have capacity? What capacity do you have? Have you been building your capacity? Building capacity means that you can accommodate people more. You can stretch yourself forth. You don't just you don't just lazy yourself around saying that you are tired. You need to rest every day. You need to rest every. You need to put. You need to put yourself. You need to to build capacity. You need to stretch yourself. Do more. If you are lazy about reading, you know, pull your socks up. Begin to begin to build a culture of reading. You can begin with one chapter a day. Even reading the word of God. You can we say a chapter a day keeps the devil away. Build a culture of reading. Don't just reason yourself around and say that Mimi Spedang he you know you people of purpose, men of great destiny, don't move with convenience, they move with convictions. You don't do what is convenient with you, you do what is in your convictions to do. So you don't feel you don't do things because you feel like doing them. You you do things because you are convinced that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. All right, capacity is very important. The meat on his table. He says that and the sitting of his servants that is called order. You must put your house in order. You must put your life in order. You know, some people have no order even in their houses. 
you look like some of the young people who are watching me right now you 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 get into their bedroom and everything is on the floor except the ceiling they have it's no order you need to put your life in order know what you want yes order is the sitting of the officials that is called order you must put your house in order if you cannot put your life in order you cannot put anything else in order if you cannot manage yourself what you call self management you cannot manage anything else there's no you can say i'm ambitious i want to become a great manager and yet there you have a problem managing you have a problem managing your own life you must begin with managing your life if you can manage your life then you can manage other people then you also say that the apparel and the car bearers we call them the dressing of the car bearers that basically means beauty there was beauty and allow me to say that beauty sells beauty sells there are people who are basically attracted by others or to others because of beauty maybe the way they dress dressing well may not actually win you so much but it can help you access places that you could not have access under normal circumstances so beauty is very 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 important and lastly and his asset his ascent by which he went up to the house of the lord that is called excellence you must be a man and a woman of an excellent spirit excellence is about how much it can bring excellence is not about whether you can afford it excellence is all about whether you can afford not to have it so when you when you continue with that scripture the bible said that there was no more spirit in her when the queen of sheba saw what she was able to see in the in king solomon's life there was no more spirit in her some other scriptures will say that she was overwhelmed and this is what she said these are my concluding words and she said to the king it was a true report that i had in my own land of thy act and of thy wisdom how bit i believe not the words until i came and my eyes had seen it and behold the half was not told me thy wisdom and prosperity exceeds the fame which i had now listen to these verses it happy are thy men happy are these servants thy servants which is stand continually before thee and that and hear and that hear your wisdom let people be happy that they are part of your life let people rejoice when they see you let people you know let, 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 let people feel blessed when you come along don't be a trouble to people add value in people's lives be a blessing to the community around you so thank you so much for watching god bless you so much that is jo wisdom at wisdom talks until next time stay safe wema tv the voice of hope